if you want to learn Spring, if you want to master Spring Boot, you want to create cloud native microservices that can be packaged in a Docker container and pushed up to a Kubernetes cluster in the AWS cloud, well, you've got a few decisions to make. And the very first decision you've got to make is which IDE you're going to use. And for my money, the right answer to that question is the free Eclipse IDE with the Spring tools already built inside of it. Now I know what you're thinking. Eclipse is a boomer IDE and you want to use VS Code or you want to use that Russian IntelliJ. And I get it. Those are cool IDEs. But there are some compelling reason to use the Eclipse IDE with Spring tools built into it. First of all, it's free. Secondly, it's open source. And thirdly, there's like no prerequisites. I'm actually running this tutorial on a 12 year old third generation Intel i7 processor. So the hardware requirements are minimal and you don't have any software prerequisites either on this machine where I'm going to install the spring tools in the Eclipse IDE. I don't have Java installed. I don't have Maven installed. I don't have Gradle installed and I don't have Git installed and you don't need to install any of those. All of them come pre-packaged with the Spring Tools Eclipse IDE. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com and I have to be one of the world's biggest Spring advocates. And in this quick tutorial, I just want to show you how to download and install the Spring Tools version of Eclipse. And on top of that, I want to show you how to just quickly create a Spring Boot project and maybe even test the environment by creating a RESTful web service that responds to invocations through the browser. It's a real simple way to just test and make sure that everything is up and running properly. But before we do that, we got to do the download and installation of the Spring Tools IDE with Eclipse. And that is what we're going to do next. So to download and install the Spring Tools IDE, just head over to spring.io slash tools. You'll see a whole bunch of options over here. Scroll down until you can find the Spring Tools for Eclipse. And we want the Windows x86 edition, at least that's the operating system that I'm running on, but you can use Linux or Mac, whichever one suits your bill. Um, that'll download. It's a fairly sizable download. It's got 665 megs of goodness in there. Uh, doesn't surprise me. Um, after you've downloaded it, you'll see this file get created here. Just unzip it. Now, here's the weird thing. Um, I'm going to extract it to the spring folder. You got to do two extractions because I don't really know what this first extraction does, but there is this uh, meaty uh, piece of information inside that extraction. You can see that's 672 megs, um, and that's actually what you want. So I'm going to say 7-zip um, extract to contents, and this will take a minute because it is uh, over 600 megs of unzipping to do, but this is really the the meat and potatoes of the Spring Source tool suite with Eclipse. Okay, that's been extracted. Now I'm going to look in that contents folder and now you can see STS release and in there, that's all of our Spring tools goodness. We'll start doing some Spring Boot development with that. Now, I like to move that folder. Well, first I like to rename that folder. I'm just going to rename that folder to STS. S, and then I'm just going to copy that folder to somewhere more convenient on my file system. I actually throw all my tools into a folder called underscore tools. I'm not overly creative with names, but I'm just going to throw it in there and that's going to make it super easy for me to find. Okay, the Spring Source tool suite has been copied into that tools folder. Now I'm just going to click on Spring Tools for EXE and kick this all off. Now, one thing I did want to just emphasize is, you know, I don't have Java installed. I don't have Git installed. I don't have Maven installed. I don't even have Gradle installed. So this is one of the great things about the Spring Source tool suite in Eclipse nowadays. 
when you download it and install it, and installation was just extraction, uh, you know, you don't need all of those other resources, right? Um, it all comes packaged inside of it. So that's pretty cool. Now, starting off, it's going to ask me where I want my workspace to be, where I want all my files to go. I actually like to create a folder on my file system right next to underscore tools called underscore workspace. And that's where I'm going to put all of these uh, workspace files. So where it says, where is your workspace? I'm just going to put it there and click select folder, click launch. And now the spring source tool suite inside of the Eclipse ID is going to launch. Okay, things are good. Welcome to the Spring Source Tool Suite inside of Eclipse. How do we get started? Well, I just want to create a, a smoke test that's going to make sure that everything is working properly. And it'll give us a chance to even take a look at how to create a RESTful API in Spring Boot. I will mention I've got a, an hour long tutorial on going really deep into RESTful APIs with Spring Boot. But uh, for now, let's just make sure that this is working. Now, uh, do I want to exclude files from being um, indexed by the antivirus tool? Uh, yeah, I'll say, yeah, that'll speed things up a little bit. Okay, with that out of the way, I can now come over here and you'll notice that there's this link, create a new Spring Starter Project. That's exactly where you want to go to. So I'm going to click on this. Um, I'm going to call this the smoke task because we just want to smoke out this installation. Uh, com.mcnz.smoke will be my group ID. Same with the package. Um, everything else looks good there except for Groovy. I don't know why, but whenever I try and run this with Groovy and I don't have Groovy explicitly installed on my machine, it fails. But with Maven, uh, it works like a charm. So I'm going to select Maven there as the build type. I suggest you do as well. And I'm also going to keep it at Java 17, although Java 21 is that latest LTS release and it's pretty cool. Now, with that done, with the GAV defined, I'm going to click the next button. Now, this screen here should have a scroll bar right in the middle, but it doesn't. But if I kind of jiggle <laughs> this a little bit, there we go, uh, it magically appears. And you need it to appear because I actually want you to add Spring Web. That's going to give us the ability to create RESTful APIs with Spring Boot. I'm also going to suggest that you always add, unless there is some compelling reason not to, uh, Spring Boot DevTools. Um, that just makes your life a lot easier. A bunch of helpers in there. Okay, so with that done, I can click Next. I can click Finish. Uh, and all of a sudden, the project will come up. Now, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that the project is building. So uh, if you click on that, it might even tell you the different steps that are, are taking place there. So give Spring Boot a minute to configure itself before you start digging into that project folder. Okay, and it looks good. I got some kind of LSP error in the bottom there, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it. One thing I do recommend you do right after you create your first project in here, especially if it's Maven, is just right click and say, run as a Maven install. That's actually just gonna force your local environment to look at the palm.xml file, look at the configuration file for Spring Boot. It's gonna look and find all of the different packages that your project is using, and it's gonna download all the libraries from Maven Central. You can actually see all of those output entries in uh, my output window there. That's just the tool going to Maven and downloading everything that your project needs. It's nice to do right at the start so that uh, uh, you know that you've got everything you need in order to start creating microservices quickly. Okay, well, so let's build success. I'm not gonna argue with that. I'm gonna come over here, take a look at the project. You'll notice that 
when you create a, a Spring Boot application, it actually creates a, a class with the same name of your project, Smoke Test Application, uh, and it does have this Spring Boot application annotation on there. Can you see that? You might not be able to, so that's why I'm going to go into Preferences quickly and just increase the uh, size of my fonts here so it's a little bit easier for you to see the code on my screen. And there we go. That does make it just a little bit easier to see that annotation. And so this is the heart of your Spring Boot application. This is the, the method that gets run when your Spring Boot application starts up for the very first time. Public static void main. That's the heart of your application. Now, for the most part, we can leave this class alone. Uh, we just create our, our own classes and we decorate them with Spring Boot annotations. I'd like to create a a REST controller, a RESTful API. And in order to do that, well, everything is supposed to be just kind of Java based. So I'm going to create a, a brand new class. I'm going to call it smoke test controller. Okay, just simple. And from here, I'm going to add a couple of annotations. Uh, this is going to be a REST controller. So it's going to be able to handle RESTful invocations, invocations over the web. So I'm going to set that as a, a REST controller. I'm also going to add cross origin as a, an annotation as well. That'll allow this application to be tested from a browser. If you don't know what cross origin does, add it into your RESTful APIs until uh, you have a better understanding of what it does. It'll save you a lot of pain in the future. Um, now I do have a couple of errors there. Can you see those red X's? Can you, can you see the red X's there? If you can see the red X's, you need to get your eyes checked because those are not red X's, those are white X's inside of a red circle. But if you see the white X's, uh, don't worry. That's just because we need to do some imports. So you can right click and say source, organize imports, and the tool is gonna figure out that rest controller and cross origin are just part of the Spring Framework. So that's good, we're getting there. Now, I wanna actually just create a, a web service that will respond to localhost 8080 slash smoke test. Right? Um, and so to do that, uh, what you do is you create a method and you annotate it with something called a get mapping annotation and you say, um, if anybody says smoke test as the URL, um, it should take them to this method. Now, what method? Well, I don't know. Public string um, uh, is this working? I don't know. Might be the name of the method. You just need some method. And here we'll just return a string. We'll just say situation uh, normal all fried up. That's actually what the term snafu comes from. S-N-A-F-U. Situation normal. All fried up. Throw a semicolon in there and it looks like we've got our very first RESTful API created. Now again, I'm getting nagged with that red X, sorry, that white X and uh, right click, source, organize imports. Uh, you can also do control shift O, which I do from time to time as well. That now adds that in and we've got a, a little RESTful API created. So why don't we test it out? Why don't we see if localhost slash 8080 slash smoke test actually gets it to say situation normal all fried up. So I'm going to come over here to the smoke test, right click, say run as a spring boot application. And it'll ask me to open up a couple of ports on my machine. I'm going to allow all access there. If I look at the console window, it doesn't give me any errors. It does say that Tomcat is started on port 8080. Sometimes I forget what server Spring Boot gets packaged with. Sometimes I think it's Jetty, but you can see right there it is Tomcat. I can't argue with that. And in theory, I should be able to come over here, say localhost colon 8080 slash smoke test. And there we go. Situation normal, all fried up. And that maps to exactly what we wanted to see um, when the application ran. So I just wanted to increase the font there so that we can map one to another. But yeah, you can actually see all of that is now currently working. 
So there you go. That's how easy it is to download and install Spring uh, Boot for the Spring Source Tool Suite that allows you to do Spring Boot development. Again, no prerequisites required other than just a relatively modern operating system. And I got Windows 10 here, so it's not that modern. Um, fairly few required resources. I've got a, a 10 year old machine that I'm running on. And as you can see, it's more than enough to handle uh, Spring Source Tool Suite and create these applications that can get deployed on Tomcat, packaged in Docker containers and pushed up to Kubernetes cluster. So there you go. Now, I do want to say I've got a couple of tutorials on Spring Boot, um, a, an hour long one that really takes you in depth on creating RESTful APIs with Spring Boot. I've got uh, some on Spring uh, JDBC, Spring Data, Spring JPA. And speaking of JPA, I'm actually the author of Hibernate Made Easy. So um, if you're interested in learning more about Hibernate, I definitely suggest you head over to Amazon and check that out. Also, I'm the author of Pickering Springfield too. So if you're into The Simpsons, you want to know the origin of the fictional town of Springfield, you can pick that up as well. And you also see in my book catalog behind me, there's also a book by Darcy DeClute, Scrumptious on Twitter. Um, and that's the Scrum Master Certification Guide. I helped edit it. Um, a lot of people are scoring 100% on the Scrum Master exam after reading that. So uh, if you want to enhance your career and get into Scrum Mastery, that's definitely a book to check out as well. Anyways, if you're interested in, in me, you can always follow me on on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ. I am the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. We got lots of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, microservices, and Java. So uh, check those out. And finally, if you're watching on this on YouTube, like why don't you subscribe on YouTube?